On today's episode of Watch Jargo, it's Hummer time. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jr. going today. Like I said, I am here with my Hummer H3, my 2007-ish roughly. Look, I forgot what year this is. 1106. It's a 2007. Uh Hummer H3 and today, well, what we need to do, our end goal here is to get the transmission out of this thing. I think our goal for today though is to get the transfer case out because that seems like a more reasonable thing to buy it off. Now there's a lot to get done. I've pulled plenty of GM transmissions. You've probably pulled GM transmissions, mostly this one, it's a 4L60, the one that's usually broken. And it's pretty simple in a two wheel drive. Pull the starter, spin the thing around really slowly, you know, going through the starter hole, pull out all the converter bolts. They're facing, you know, the front of the engine there. And uh, three or four of those in there, you'll get all those out and then do, you know, everything else to unbolt the bell housing, drop a transmission. With four wheel drive, it's more complicated. We got two drive shafts that need to come out. We gotta get the rear drive shaft and the front drive shaft. There's an actuator for the four wheel drive we're gonna take off. It's the electric motor that engages and disengages. Well, what's really a high low selector on this thing because it's always four wheel drive. Transfer case has to come off. Some, uh, I would assume, I think I saw a couple cross members under there. Those need to come off. We're gonna get all that done eventually. Today, we're gonna get that transfer case out of there. It's, uh, I think it's the same transfer case that I was taking out with Alex up at Legit Streetcars in his uh, ML, his AMG ML. I think it's the same Borg Warner transfer case. Pretty cool. All right, let's get under here and get started. So uh, today's gonna be a fun one. We're gonna do this in the garage. I really wanted to do it on a two post, which is where you need to do it, but I don't know how long I'm gonna be without the transmission. Um, and I can't tie up Johnny's lift for that long. If I could get the transmission rebuilt in one day, which is possible, you know, I'd do it at Johnny's shop. But I, I hate to put that burden on him. So instead, we're gonna pull this transmission on the floor the worst possible way. It's like a two hour, three hour job on a lift. It's a lot longer job on the floor. Let's get to it. That right there is our mission for today. So our front drive shaft connection is right there. And the rear, we'll just get all that out. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna go through here. It looks like this cross member's gotta come out and we'll figure out what it's gonna take to get this transfer case out. I actively avoid all four wheel drive vehicles just so I don't have to service this nonsense. But today, we're jumping in. This is the first and hopefully the last four wheel drive drop I ever do in my life. I, You guys know, every truck I've ever bought has been two wheel drive, except for my daily driver, just to avoid this problem here. We're gonna start by jacking this thing up and uh, getting ourselves some room to work because right now with the creeper, it's either lay on the ground or have the creeper. And I need the creeper because, <laughs> look at this antique. It's a, an old Montgomery Ward, it's so old, but it's in great shape. But I need it because once we get the case down, I'm gonna have to like hold it on my chest and roll out. And I won't be able to do that if I'm laying on the ground. I'll have to shove it sideways. I don't wanna do that. Let's see how much uh, room we can get underneath this thing and go from there. Okay, we have established a sketchy lift it's on jack stands, all four corners. I think I can get under there. I think I can get the transfer case out. And the transmission, I might have to get taller jack stands. There's a good chance it needs uh, a lot more clearance. So, uh, we got our icon lights here, trying to light everything up so you guys can actually see it today. All right, we found the straps back here on the rear U-joint were pretty loose, but they came right out, so we're making good time there. Uh, this drive shaft is obviously ready to come off because it just slides out. We'll slide it out of the case here in just a moment and make a giant mess. We've got our four wheel drive actuator unplugged and I found a wire that's pulled out of the connector. So that is on the priority list there. Uh, I gotta get that wire crimped back into its pin. And a couple bolts here on the actuator. Those are coming out in a minute. You can see this drive shaft is already free right there. It's opened up and I'm ready to uh, shove it forward and pop it out of its U-joint that's also loose. And there's our front U-joint. I'm ready to just give that a couple little taps. It should fall right out of there. So at this point, things are going a little bit too smoothly. Hopefully they keep going this smoothly and uh, we'll make a giant mess in just a second. I was just kind of getting everything loose so we can pour all the fluid that's gonna come out of the transfer case into a pan here. Okay, we've got the cross member down and that created a mess. Obviously this thing, uh, I noticed on some of the bolts, the threads are actually full of sand and silt. 
this thing has been buried in mud. You look at the e-brake bracket here, just packed with mud. So the mud was probably up to here at one point, but uh, it's, it's been used. Somebody tried to Hummer this thing. Anyway, we've got our drive shafts off, our cross, center cross members down. I'm gonna put the jack under the transmission pan with a board here so that we can uh, support that. Finish pulling that actuator off. Still no fluid coming out of the transfer case itself. Sorry, the lights are a little too bright under there, but we're almost there. Rear drive shaft dropped right out. Front drive shaft laying up there. Everything's coming apart nice and easy. Obviously because it already has a reman transmission in it, that Jasper, um, it's out of warranty. I did check. It's been, uh, it was put in in 2019 and the warranty's two years or three years. So the warranty expired in 21 or 22. It's just out of warranty. So obviously we're gonna get this fixed ourselves uh, instead of like sending that back. Honestly, you can fix it a lot cheaper, especially if it's just a front pump seal. So let's keep going. We have everything apart on this and I have the transfer case bolts coming out of the back of the transmission there. Uh, there is a speed sensor. If you see that little stub sticking up right there, that's unhooked. That's your output speed sensor, two wire connector, just like that. You gotta get that out of there. And uh, of course, the actual actuator has to be unhooked. And over here, we have this hose that's the vent for the transfer case. That's gotta be popped off too. But that's about it. It looks like there's five bolts. I've got one, two, three, four loose. And that one on top looks like it's gonna be really hard to get to, but we're gonna make it happen. Once we get that unbolted, we'll be ready to pull the transfer case out. Um, it's gonna be tricky. I don't have two floor jacks here. So hopefully I can grab that thing, slide it back. You gotta slide it back off of the transmission. It's gotta move quite a bit and then it's gotta kinda come forward. The transmission probably has to go up at the same time. It's gonna be a little bit tricky for all of those pieces to fall into place at one time. We're gonna try to make it happen. Everything looks exactly the same as it did a few minutes ago, but the two top bolts are out. So there's six bolts that hold the transfer case to the, dip, to the uh, transmission here. If you guys see, I've got those ones started there and the outer ones there I left tight so it wouldn't just fall. But the top ones, you need a 15 stubby or a super long ratchet extension train. That's kind of my favorite thing to do. Uh, hard to do here and I don't think I have a four foot extension here. If you do though, that should solve that problem. And then we're ready to pull out these last four bolts, jack the transmission back up and the diff is free. I said diff, I meant transfer case. You guys know what I meant. As you guys can see, we got all the bolts out of the transfer case. It's turned uh, 45 degrees or so, it's starting to leak out of the back of the transmission. So it's time, I've got the transmission all the way up against the tunnel, jacked it up as high as it'll go. I think we're ready to pull this thing. Let's see how uh, ridiculous it is. Well, after we got the transfer case down, it did not come out. You guys can see that the uh, output shaft from the transmission is still sticking in the case quite a bit to where it can't come down. It's completely captured right there between that cross member and the transmission. So I ended up pulling the bolts on this little housing here that's about four inches. And now I think we're free. I'm gonna grab the hammer, give it a couple taps right there, right there. And I think this will separate, go back to the transmission. It's not gonna stay obviously. Um, but then the transfer case should come down. So hopefully that's all this takes. This side's gasketed, so there's also a good chance this is gonna start leaking like crazy once I pop it loose. Let's find out.
<laughs> I got it jammed in there. Woohoo! Here we go. Nope. Uh, yep. Nope. Yep. Oh gosh, I can't get this down. Oh. Oh. Oh, I did it! We got it out. As soon as that front housing came off, you do have to get that all the way tight to the back of the transmission. You can see it's kind of hanging there all loose. Uh, I had to keep getting it tighter back to the transmission output shaft there because if, if it's not all the way up against it, it does not want to come out. But we made a big mess. Transfer case is out. Let's clean this up, slide this out of here, and get ready for step two. The battery is, of course, already unhooked, which means I can pull the starter. And once we get the starter out, we can pull the torque converter bolts, and we're getting really close to having the transmission out. This would have been much better on a lift, like I was saying, but we got it done. And I might borrow a motorcycle jack to finish getting the transmission out. As you guys know, if you pull them on a jack, they usually roll to one side or the other, and it's not fun when they fall. So we're going to try to prevent that and uh, maybe we'll just get two people, who knows. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. That's how you pull a transfer case out of your Hummer H3. If you need to, hopefully you don't. And if you do, hopefully you have a two post left and no big deal. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watch for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I will talk to you next time. Look at those beautiful hood struts. We already fixed the most important part. I don't have to go find wood to shove in the corner of the hood anymore. We're, we're fancy now. So that'll make everything easy. I also have to go get a four foot extension to do that. Yeah, I have one, it's just not here. And yeah, you guys know how those bell housing bolts are. They're usually a pain. So we'll get there. I'm excited, two, three more hours. We'll have it out. We're gonna have a guy rebuild this I've never used before. And we'll see if he can knock this thing out in one day. And we'll just put it right back together and go off-roading again, <laughs> break it again.